Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. In this video, we're going to learn the final subtopic for chapter 5 states of matter called phase diagram. Before we look at the phase diagram thoroughly, we need to first understand what is meant by this term phase. So phase is a homogeneous part of a system in contact with other parts of the system, but they are separated by the well-defined boundary. So combining what have you learned so far from 5.1 until 5.3, the phase on phase diagram will consist of solid, liquid, and gas. Let's try to look at some example. Given food coloring is dropped into a beaker of clear water, we could see there's a gradient of color, but they ended up blend in very well, as in no difference in terms of its states. Hence, this is considered as one phase system. Next, we are given orange juice added with some ice cube in here. We could clearly see that these two components are separated from one another. The juice is a liquid, while the ice cube is a solid, even though the ice cube will slowly melt after a while. So this example is for two phases system. And lastly, we have salt to be dissolved in hot water. There will be three phases exist. After a few minutes, the reaction is taking place. The insoluble salt at the bottom forming solids. So this may be due to the temperature of water, which is not hot enough to be able to dissolve all the salts. Somewhere in the middle is going to be the salt solutions, where salt and water manage to react with one another, forming liquid phase. And higher up in here, we have water vapor resulted from the evaporations of water. This is going to be the three phases system. Phase diagram is a diagram showing what phase a substance will be in at particular pressure and temperature, whether solid, liquid or gas phases in which they are thermodynamically stable. So we're going to start by drawing the y-axis of pressure in ATM and x-axis of temperature in degrees Celsius. On the phase diagram, there will be three phases, solid, liquid, gas, separated by three lines. So these lines represent equilibrium between the two phases, solid liquid, liquid gas, or solid gas. This diagram will provide us with two types of information. The first information is on the regions separated by the lines in which they represent the conditions of pressure and temperature that are most likely to produce a solid, a liquid, or a gas. Note that as long as they are separated by a line, each phase is considered homogeneous. The second information lies on the lines that divide the diagram into states, which represent the combinations of pressure and temperature at which two states are in equilibrium. Any points along the line connecting points A and B represent the conditions at which solid is in equilibrium with the gas. At this temperature and pressure, the rate at which the solid sublimes to form a gas going to be equal to the rate at which gas condenses to form solid. At every point along line B and C, the solid melts at the same rate in which the liquid will freeze, while along B and D line, the liquid will boil to form gas and the gas condenses to form liquid is at the same rate. Point B in here is called triple point. So this point represents the combinations of pressure and temperature at which a pure substance can exist simultaneously as a solid, liquid, or gas. So this is a triple point. While point D is called critical point of a substance, where the highest pressure and temperature at which gas and liquid can coexist at equilibrium. So this point indicates the end of liquid gas line means any point beyond will no longer form liquid despite high pressure is supplied. There will be two types of phase diagram to be formed. One is positive, another one is negative. The positive or negative phase diagram will be determined from the line separated the solid and liquid. So we're going to draw a vertical line passing through the triple point of a substance. If the slope is slanted to the right, just like in this example, it is called positive slope. If it's slanted to a bit left, it will indicate a negative slope. So this positive or negative slope tells us about the density of solid 
when compared to liquid, which we'll talk more later on. Now we will look at an example of positive slope phase diagram characterized by carbon dioxide. Always starts with pressure and temperature on your diagram. Each substance will have its own triple point and critical point, where triple point for carbon dioxide is negative 57 degrees C and 5.2 atm, whereas the critical point is located at 31 degrees C and 73 atm. By having these two points will eventually aid you in sketching the phase diagram. Sometimes you'll be given additional information regarding melting point, which will help you to determine the correct slope to be drawn. Let's say we don't have any information regarding melting point, so let's just draw a dotted line between solid and liquid phase to see whether the substance belongs to positive or negative slope. It will all depend on the density at particular state. For most compound, the line separated solid and liquid usually has a positive slope, indicated by the curve shifting to the right, as shown in the figure. So triple point of negative 57 degrees C and 5.2 atm tells us that liquid carbon dioxide cannot exist at pressure lower than 5.2 atm. At 1 atm, the solid carbon dioxide sublimes directly to become vapor while maintaining its normal temperature of sublimations of negative 78 degrees C. Solid carbon dioxide is generally known as dry ice because it is a cold solid with no liquid phase observed when it is warmed. Any pressure above 5.2 atm or points located above triple point will favor the formations of solid as the area on the graph for solid is much bigger than the liquid. So this indicates the melting point of carbon dioxide will increase a bit due to the bigger area covered by solid. If we perform isobaric heating where the pressure is kept constant while the temperature increases, we could see liquid water changes phase to gas via boiling and hence boiling point will also increase. Negative slope phase diagram is usually exhibited by water molecules. The triple point for water is at coordinate 0.01 degree C and 0.06 atm while the critical point is at 374 degrees C and 218 atm. If we recall the hydrogen bond made by the water molecule in solid ice, they will form an open hexagonal structure, indicates that liquid water is more dense than the solid ice. Therefore, the slope of this line is slightly negative, means more to the left, results in bigger area covered by the liquid. What happened if we increase the pressure to exactly 1 atm and then we draw a horizontal line across a phase diagram like this? So increasing the pressure will favor the formations of liquid obviously because the area on the graph for liquid is much bigger than the solid. Apart from that, increasing the pressure to 1 atm will also tell us about the melting and boiling point of the water. If we kept the pressure constant and increasing the temperature, we could see the water changes phase from solid to liquid via melting in here. So we got our melting point, while liquid changes to gas via boiling. So this is the boiling point. Even though the temperature is increased, the melting point of water will slightly decrease compared to its boiling point and also compared to carbon dioxide just now due to the negative slope of these, which will favor more liquid to be formed. Note that both melting points and also boiling points are located on equilibrium curve or the lines indicates that the two phases, the solid and liquid or liquid and gas are in equilibrium. Let's check your understanding in interpreting a phase diagram of a substance. Given phase diagram of substance X, if we look carefully, this diagram has a positive slope, indicates more energy needed to melt the solid form of substance X. But the questions didn't ask for its melting point. Instead, it asks for phase changes starting from point A to reach point B, where isobaric heating is applied. So the term isobaric here belongs to a conditions in which pressure can be measured by using barometer is kept constant. 
So constants here belong to the prefix iso. So we need to draw a line like this, which touches both point A and point B. For any phase change to happen, at least one of the variables must vary. So for this case, the temperature will vary by keeping the pressure constant. Even though we are given only points A and B, but along the way from A to B will involve much more transitions of phase. So having these horizontal lines indicate the pressure is kept constant. And then we need to define any other point on our own if the questions didn't give any. So for these questions, let's define point X, Y, and Z. Point A is located on solid region. Point X, since it lies on a line, indicates the two phases are in equilibrium. They are solid and liquid in equilibrium. Moving on to the next region, we have point Y. So point Y is in liquid phase. As for point Z, again on a line, this time liquid and gas is in equilibrium. And finally, point B is located in gas phase. That's how you interpret this phase diagram. That's all you need to know for subtopic 5.4 phase diagram. And that's marked the end of chapter 5 states of matter. Thank you.